in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you Her graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed if you care to learn, let me give you quickly three keys to building intimacy with the Holy Spirit. Number one, a dedicated life of prayer, even in the Spirit. A dedicated life of prayer, not circumstantial prayer, not once in a while prayer. A dedicated life of prayer. Number two, a consistent atmosphere of intense worship a consistent atmosphere of intense worship number three which like i said yesterday is one of the greatest ingredients in securing intimacy with the holy spirit a hunger and a desperation for his presence that is characterized by brokenness a hunger and a desire for his presence backed up by a life of brokenness Oh, I need you, oh God. I need you in my life. And then, of course, the study of the word enhances your knowledge. But in truth, it is only when he arrives that you understand the word. You practice consistent prayer. Not just need-driven prayer. Prayer for edification and growth. Submit yourself to intense atmospheres of worship and consistently live a broken and surrendered life and you have secured the keys that attract rich dimensions of the presence of the holy spirit now let me give you for our discussion tonight the final key that becomes the basis for the believer's victory one being that oh god is the all-powerful god two being the implication of our being partakers of this divine life number three the rich ministry of the paraclete the holy spirit number four i like this the fourth basis for our being victorious in the kingdom is that we have been given exceeding great and precious promises second peter chapter one second peter chapter one from verse two to four we have been given exceeding great and precious promises he did not just give us the consciousness of his might he did not just give us the divine life he did not just give us the holy spirit he also left us thank you very much with great exceeding great and precious promises i read and you follow grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of god and of our Lord Jesus Christ read verse 3 with me if you are a Christian ready please read according as his divine power hath given us all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him that has called us to glory and virtue verse 4 whereby I given unto us exceeding great and precious promises that by them we might be partakers of his divine nature having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust we have been given exceeding great peter calls them and precious promises what are these promises i have taught here that the bible essentially contains three things if you recall my teaching number one the bible contains promises god's commitment to the believer 
Number two, the Bible contains principles, a revelation of the modus operandi of the kingdom. Number three, the Bible contains prophecies, a roadmap into the future. Are we together? So every time you open your Bible, you are interacting with three dimensions of realities. Number one, promises. Number two, principles. Number three, prophecies. Let me repeat one last time. Number one, promises. Number two, principles. Number three, prophecies. Please listen to me. As mighty as God is, the only basis of his commitment to the believer is his word. God cannot be committed to the believer outside of the jurisdiction of his word. Are we together? That means every reality that the word of God does not allow, God will not do. Because he himself has submitted himself. He has brought his name in submission to his word. Are we together? That he has exalted his word even above his office. As mighty as God is, his word is the jurisdiction of his dealings and his relationship with the believer. So every time you want to commit God to your life, blindly saying, God, come to my rescue, is not a manifestation of faith that translates to victory. There must be a scriptural backing. God only does what he has said. God does not do what you want. He only does what you want that is consistent with what he has said. Look at this scripture with me, everybody. Genesis 21 verse 1. Genesis 21 verse 1. We're going to read verse 1. Please read it as loud as you can if you are a Christian. Are you ready? One to read. And the Lord visited Sarah. Uh-huh. Stop, stop, stop. The Lord visited Sarah, not as she wanted, not as she cried for. The visitation only came as he had said. Let's finish the reading. And the Lord did unto Sarah as he had spoken. God only visits as he has said. He only does as he has spoken. So if you cannot find what he has said and what he has spoken, there is no visitation and there is no doing. Is someone learning so if i want to be healthy merely saying god forbid i will not be sick that is just you comforting yourself sickness will ravage you as if it's not aware you are a christian there has to be a basis what did god say concerning your health hallelujah are we together no inhabitant in zion shall say i am sick that becomes a basis by his stripes we were healed. That becomes the basis. If the spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells in your mortal body, that same spirit will quicken, vitalize your mortal body. That now becomes your basis. On the strength of this scripture, you can now declare health. How about longevity? God forbid, even death knows it will not come. You will be surprised that you wake up and find out you are dead. Out of this world, in another dimension, what is the basis of your longevity? Number one, the Bible says I shall not die, but live and declare the works of the Lord. Number two, children obey your parents in the Lord that it will be well with you and that you might enjoy length of days. Are we together? Number three, on account of wisdom, wisdom has with it length of days. Is that in your Bible? Number four, the Bible says that ye shall serve me and I shall bless your bread and your water. Take away sickness away from you and that the fullness of your days you will fulfill. Now you gather those exceeding great and precious promises. That is what you take to war in the place of prayer. Praying without scripture is praying amiss. I repeat, praying without scripture is praying amiss. No matter the kind of energy you are dissipating, the basis of God hearing you is not your lamentation. The basis of God hearing you is you are bringing his word to him. Your prayer is only as fruitful as it is word compliant. Now, respectfully speaking, there are many believers who do all kinds of things in a place of prayer. And that's why we find out that in Africa, commendably so, we exert energy for hours doing what we know to be prayer. And yet the result versus the effort is almost one is to one million. 
the fervent and effectual prayer that means there is a kind of prayer that is not effectual hmm. it is not just the volume of prayer that gives it power <clears throat> it's not just the longevity of prayer necessarily that gives it power it is the word compliancy of your prayer are we together this is very important exceeding great and precious promises what makes you believe that you are going to rise and be great and have the influence enough to serve the purposes of the kingdom people like me no sir that is not a scriptural basis you are not speaking like a believer a believer is one who has submitted to the word of god to guide your understanding and your approach in all things deuteronomy chapter 28 from verse 1 it shall come to pass if thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the lord thy god to do and observe all that i command you this day it says that thou shalt be exalted above all the nations of the earth and this blessing shall come upon you and overtake you so when you are praying for influence you don't pray blindly and say god you know where i'm coming from i'm tired of being small that is a sincere prayer but it's not a scriptural prayer listen to me god is touched with the feelings of your infirmity but he's only moved by what he has said let me repeat it for your understanding god is touched by the feelings of your infirmity we call that compassion but he's only moved by what he has said do not forget genesis 21 verse 1 the lord visited sarah as he had said he did unto sarah as he had spoken the lord will only visit your ministry as he has said he will only do unto you man of god as he has spoken the lord will only visit taraba as he has said so if you want a visitation don't just say god come and visit us what is the scriptural basis where has he said in scripture that he's coming to visit you is it not in your bible that the knowledge of the glory of the lord shall cover the earth is taraba not part of the earth you can take that as a scripture it is his desire that all men be saved and that they come into the knowledge of the truth there are many believers who are not scripture based they are not word compliant and so you find out that our lives are inefficient for instance someone wants to rebuke a spirit and he says you know i'm a man of god don't play with me go you are joking no demons have never never been mandated to respect your personality no 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 they do not respect you they respect who you represent when men say there is a casting down i say there is a lifting up exceeding great and precious promises are we together now yes i arise and i shine for my light is come and the glory of the lord is risen upon me exceeding great and precious promises i shall not die but live and declare the blessings of the lord nothing dies in my hands why because the bible says i am blessed the works of my hands are blessed blessed in the city blessed in the country therefore everything i touch is blessed how do i know i am a blessing and not a curse because in genesis chapter 12 and verse 2 and 3 he says in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed so when you say you are blessed it's not because you are giving people money or doing charity that is not why you are blessed you are blessed because there is a force behind you upon the scripture that you are standing in that compels the world to acknowledge you as blessed of the lord hallelujah why do i know that every time i speak to people they will be blessed and changed because it is written i will give you a mouthpiece and a wisdom that your adversary your enemies will not be able to gainsay nor resist he says my heart is indicting a good matter yea i speak of excellent things my tongue is as a pen of a ready writer that means i do not speak and waste the times of people no in my speaking is life in my speaking is healing it is not just because i have studied by the privilege of god's grace i've studied and continue to study to make myself approved unto god a workman that needed not to be ashamed rightly dividing the word of truth 
but like Paul will say I am what I am by the grace of God yet this grace was not showered on me in that I labored more than ye all but that it is still credited to his grace can I tell you your life becomes invincible when you surround yourself with the word exceeding great and precious promises if you send me a prophetic word and say Apostle Joshua Selman I saw you dying it doesn't matter whether you are right or wrong I will first thank you for being honest and loving towards me and then I will go to sleep you need to know the scriptures death has to pass before it reaches me I build my life with the word garrisons upon garrisons a system of defense around me is it not in your Bible I lay me down and I slept some tree I say I wait for the Lord sustains me so it is only when the Lord refuses to sustain me that I will not wake up but the keeper of Israel is in your Bible he does not sleep two of us cannot be awake when I am done walking I will sleep because the keeper has decided that he does not sleep nor slumber and the Bible says he giveth his beloved sleep are you learning now Taraba listen to me let me give you an assignment tonight as we prepare even if I don't have the time to say anything to you and we share the grace from here I will still live satisfied stop just being traditional or cultural or just humane you have to switch to become scriptural if you want to be victorious don't just say our people said it no your people don't have the power to drive demons respectfully speaking I'm not trying to downplay on culture I believe in culture and all of that I'm teaching you how to be victorious hallelujah I believe with all my heart that I will serve the purposes of God from nation to nation from place to place blessing him because he has made me a blessing I have you have not chosen me I have chosen you John 15 16 and ordained you that you should go and bear fruit and that your fruit will remain hear me music ministers when you stand to sing more than a great voice you must have a scripture what is the basis of your believing you will come and bless the people I think they like my voice you will only be given a special number what translates a special number to become life is that there is a scriptural understanding so men like Don Moen can come and stand in front of you and say God will make a way where there seems to be no way he walks in ways we cannot see he will make a way for me he will be my guide hold me closely to his side with love and strength for each new day he will make a way do you know why the songs of this man don't die you don't find at leaping and shouting but the word of God stops it from dying because all they sing is scripture and the life within the word is invested in the songs and it remains those songs were, were sung before many people some of our children were born and it still remains eternal when your life becomes garrisoned let me say it for one last time with scripture everything about your life how do you know your children will not become um, some some wayward children what is the basis I am training them well wrong no daddy no mommy that is not what some of the most disciplined families have sadly produced some children that are very disturbing there must be a scripture I and the children the Lord has given me we are for signs and for wonders in Israel my children are great and they are taught of the Lord great is their peace that becomes your confession can I tell you the truth when your life becomes governed by scripture you get up in the morning and you want to leave what gives you a guarantee that you are returning back in peace in this wicked world your going out is blessed is it not in your Bible and your coming in is blessed the reason why we walk victorious is that we have been given exceeding great and precious I expect men to bless me every day 
I expect men to favor me every day because I have become Bula and Hefziba. It is true. I truly believe this with all my heart. I believe that the favor of God is upon my life. Why? Because the Bible says that he has surrounded us with favor as with a shield. And I know what it is able to do. What is your life built upon? Is it built on sand or is it built on the rock? Man of God, beyond having a vision, go and get scripture for your ministry. Don't tell people I will excel because I had a vision. It's too small a reason. Go and find a scriptural basis, then let your vision support it. What makes you believe people will come to hear you? I think I'm a sincere person. No, sir. I think I can preach. You're right, but no, sir. I think I'm honest. No, sir. I think I'm from Taraba. No, sir. And I, if I be lifted up from the earth, I will draw all men to myself. Hallelujah. Now we're going to pray a few minutes and then we'll step into that impartation. Please do not forget what you have learned tonight as simple and as basic as it is. If you have been born again to win, you must understand these four factors. They are not all. There are many more. But these are foundational truths that your faith must be anchored upon. Number one, the almightiness of God. Number two, the fact that you are a partaker of his divine nature. One with Christ, together with Christ, exalted with Christ. is a spiritual reality above principalities and powers and all kinds of things. I remember years ago when people started coming with charms, sometimes they would repent. When they repent, maybe families that serve idols and they don't know what to do with some of these charms, they now suggest that they should bring it and come and drop it. Let me help them and pray over it so that they go in peace. And I now said, can you imagine something that has been killing people for decades before they were born? They now carry it and come and drop it at the apostle. <laughs> they drop those things there and leave. Know what to do with it there. You and God, you said God sent you. So, I mean, we're tired of this thing killing us. We've repented, so we cannot see God. But since you say you are close to him, help us and know what to do with this chance. You know how many of those things I've held with my hand? There are things you cannot fake. No. It is only when we get to heaven we'll know the amounts of poisons we have eaten. The shrines that have carried our names on a daily basis. Let him go down. Let him fail. But thanks be to God who always causes us to triumph. Always. 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 There have been times I've been wanting to take trips and sincere people loving people they call and say apostle please don't go i am a prophet and i've had a revelation i saw a ghastly motor accident and i saw you dead and they were not lying that was the plan of the enemy but what then is the excellency of dominion i congratulate them for seeing and i salute their sincerity and compassion but you see there is no business between an aircraft and an angry crocodile in the water they have no meeting point an aircraft is far passing the sea it is only when you come to that domain that you become a victim of that crocodile have you ever seen a pilot saying we have an issue with the cry of crocodiles they are hungry and so will not be able to pass the Mediterranean there are times where you travel across the globe, 90% of your trip is across the sea with sharks and whales, yet those in the flight do not even know. It has not stopped the existence of the shark, nor did it stop their hunger. You were only elevated to a plane far beyond their reach. Do you believe this? So if someone calls you and says, Ah, I saw your name in a shrine. Oh. You start praying for the salvation of the harbalist because he has put himself in trouble. He said, Why do you want to do this to your children? Your children are longing for a father. My assignment is for you to repent and change. Who 
gave you this contract that you want to end your life for no reason is it not in your bible that he suffered no man to do them wrong he reproved kings for their sake saying touch not mine anointed and do my prophets no harm you see you can quote that scripture and nothing happens but when your life becomes submitted to the word i remind you of genesis 21 1 the lord will only visit you as he has said he will only do unto you as he has spoken one more time the lord will only visit you as he has said he will only do unto you as he has spoken man of god expect visitations because he has said it expect a performance because he has spoken it rise up on your feet as we pray I'll just give us two prayer points and then I'll speak over our lives whether you are outside inside following online now is the time where your spirit becomes enlarged and open ready to receive one prayer point father I decree and declare and I ask in the name of Jesus that my life becomes a manifestation of the victory that is in Christ lift your voice and begin to pray that my life becomes a manifestation and those who are watching from your various homes watching by way of television participate in the prayer watching by way of internet make sure you are praying that my life becomes a manifestation north east pray taraba pray believers pray in the name of Jesus that my life becomes a manifestation of the victory that is in Christ this is the victory that overcometh the world even our faith this is the victory that overcomes principalities and powers is someone praying I decree and declare that I begin to walk in the experience of eternal life the experience of the life of God that I have received in the name of Jesus I decree in the name of Jesus I declare hallelujah hallelujah final prayer point I will add everything in one father that which you had in store for me in the womb of prophecy as you put this conference to pass I'm ready to receive it now is it the healing is it the impartation is it the direction as it has come that which God has in store for you I'd like you to open your mouth and aggressively pray in the next one minute go ahead and pray that which you have for my church my ministry my business the territory the government families politicians captains of industry academicians the institutions of learning within this region in the name of Jesus now we are ready to receive the Bible says, he that told you have asked for nothing it says ask and you shall receive that your joy might be full is it a greater grace for ministry go ahead and ask what things soever ye desire it says when ye pray believe that thou receivest them and thou shall have them believe that thou receivest them and thou shall have them believe that thou receivest them and thou shall have them hallelujah 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 now you have prayed it's my turn to pray for you every time God wants to help men he sends men every time Satan wants to destroy men he sends men every time the season in a man's life is about to change he sends men every time God wants to restore he sends men in John chapter 5 
when Jesus met the man at Bethesda and said why are you in this condition his only request is I have no man I have no man I know what to do but I have no man and something that can happen in one moment was prolonged for 38 years not because the river dried up I have no man hallelujah there were many widows in Zarephath but to none was Elijah sent the day of joy in a man's life is the day he encounters the grace sent to him not the grace available the grace sent the grace sent the grace sent I believe with all my heart that standing in partnership with the grace upon his lordship and the corporate anointing within this place that there will be a distribution of possibilities that men will access graces we need this not just for our sake not just for the sake of saying i am anointed i am a great man but for the sake of god and the sake of his sheep are we together now praise the name of the lord now let me start tonight by rebuking the operation of spirits it will be a quick walk i don't intend to stretch us longer than necessary we have been patiently waiting many of us have stood all the way outside and around and it's not my intention to stretch us longer than necessary but let me back up please don't be distracted no moving around have your attention wrapped and fixed on jesus as you receive yeah spirits are real they manipulate men they have a singular assignment of thwarting the purposes of god and as you may have learned there are three bases three scriptural basis for any advantage that satan may have over men number one is called covenant number two is called ignorance number three is called disobedience these are the only platforms upon which satan is able to afflict the saints let me repeat it one last time for your knowledge number one covenants now, the danger with covenants is that they have a transgenerational implication. You don't have to be there, but except it is being superimposed by the mystery of the blood and mercy, it will work. Covenants. Number two, ignorance. Number three, disobedience. We judge disobedience in this kingdom only when our obedience is complete. Every time God wants to judge disobedience, he gives you a room to obey. And for these three reasons, there are many people here who are under all kinds of satanic oppressions. No wonder the Bible says, upon Mount Zion, there shall be deliverance and holiness, and the sons of Jacob shall possess their possessions. If you understand what deliverance is from a scriptural basis, you are not adding to what Christ has done. Deliverance is a spiritual strategy where the victory that has been wrought in Christ is established experientially in the life of the believer. Are we together? And there are two levels of deliverance as taught in scripture. Number one, there is the casting away through the power of the word and the blood, the spirit influences that attach themselves to men and attach themselves to situations. The second dimension is deliverance through transformation, where you now bring the word of God and reprogram the understanding of that person so that through ignorance, it does not keep the door of his heart open. And then number three, if you may add, is called the discipline of conformity. I have done a teaching. Complete deliverance is based on these three things. Number one, casting out the spirit influences that have now plagued men just because jesus died and gave you victory does not mean you know by now that it automatically your receiving jesus gives you access your walking in obedience makes it your experience the same cross that set you free from sin set you free from sickness set you free from demons why do we still go to hospitals today because we are still growing in faith and the administration of eternal life is still being progressive you are not embarrassed as a christian when you go to the hospital you shouldn't be embarrassed when demons are casted out they are not casted out because you are possessed you don't have to be possessed to be free from spirits if they can manipulate your mind at the realm of the mind they still need to be casted out 
I needed to say this as a basis because there are many people who have been lied to and trapped down through ignorance. No. Jesus looks at Peter, a man who he is personally mentoring and says, get thee behind me, Satan. Satan did not fear the presence of Jesus. Even while Jesus was praying, anointed with the Holy Ghost, praying in the wilderness, the Bible says Satan took him to an exceeding high mountain. So what exactly is Satan afraid of? The realm of the spirit works upon a legal system. Just because it is finished with Christ does not mean it is a reality in your life. It takes faith and the operation of your understanding to make it true. Forever, O oh Lord, is said, thy word is settled. Where? Not in your life, in heaven. It takes faith to make it settled in your life. So your assignment is that let it be done in earth as it is done in heaven. Do you believe now? So let's pray. I needed to say this so that your hearts be open to receive. There is a false way of approaching things of deliverance where it becomes a consistent warfare from a mindset of defeat. Warfare for the believer has to do with establishing victory, not creating it. Are we together? The victory has been wrought in Christ right from the foundations of the earth. The lamb was slain. However, Jesus had to come and die in time to make it a reality. That reality of the lamb being slain did not save anyone. It is the death, the acting out of that death on the cross experientially that brought us salvation. There are many people whose hearts will not be open to be free from the influence of demon spirits. It is clear from their life that there are various levels of spiritual influences. So don't generalize when you see people talk about deliverance. Don't just generalize because perhaps respectfully, maybe you had a bad experience because of an ignorant approach to it. Are we together? Just because it was inaccurately approached does not mean that it cannot be doctrinally approached from the basis of scripture producing victory are you ready to receive now that is also true for healing that is also true for all manifestations of the spirit your heart must be open to embrace and to receive the entire counsel of God so I'm going to pray right now believe me there are people whose lives and destinies are under all kinds of yokes and I want to pray now I'm going to request that you shout the name Jesus. That is only a prophetic action to help you release your faith as I pray. And while we shout that name, please ushers, let's walk with time. And for those who are not ushers, please if someone is under the anointing close to you, please do me the favor of helping just to bring them out if I ask you to do like I'll do now. So that we can pray and minister to them. Hallelujah. And then very quickly we'll pray for the sick do the impartation and we're done for tonight i promise you that i will keep to time and not stretch you beyond necessary thank you by the way for your patience so far but i believe this is why you came hallelujah are you ready now thank you jesus after a lady shouts right now under the anointing i will begin to pray for the sick this is the instruction god has given me there will be a lady shout loud under the anointing Bring the lady out. Now I'm ready to pray. Lift your hands. Spirit of the Sovereign Lord, come and make your presence known. Reveal the glory of the risen Spirit of the Sovereign Lord, come and make your presence known. Reveal the glory of the risen Lord. Let the weight of your glory cover us. Let the life of your river flow. Let the truth of your kingdom let it reign in us. Let the weight of your glory fall. In the name of Jesus, every spirit that is not of the Christ, that has tied down lives, tied down destinies held down people in the name of jesus as you shout that name i decree and declare that those devils leave you now are you ready at the count of three shout that name one two three shout jesus be delivered now 
I release you now. Bring them out. I release you now. Help that lady. Please help that lady. I release you now. The devils of ancestry, operations of covenants, we come by the blood of the Lamb. Please bring them out very quickly. In the name of Jesus, let them go now. Release their destinies now. Be released in the name of Jesus. Be released in the name of Jesus. From every oppression, my Bible says, Now the Lord is that spirit. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. I decree and declare, blotting out every handwriting and every ordinance that spoke against you, it has been nailed to his cross. Therefore, I administer life and deliverance right now in the name of Jesus. We are still praying. Every family here that has been under siege, that people don't rise, people don't excel. I don't know where you are, but in the name of Jesus, let that fire rest upon you now. I release those families now. Bring them out. I release those families now. Whether in Taraba, whether in Yobe, whether in Plateau State, in Adamawa State, all across the Northeast, the North Central, the Northwest, I come in the name of Jesus here at Peniel 2023. We decree and declare liberty by the Spirit. Liberty by the Spirit. Liberty by the Spirit. Abakote Keteva. Liberty by the Spirit. Liberty by the Spirit. Hallelujah. You have won the victory. Hallelujah. You have won it all for me. Hallelujah. I'm hearing in my spirit delay. I don't know whose life has been delayed and whose family has been delayed. In the name of Jesus, that chain of delay right now be broken. 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 Delay. Delay. Be broken. Hallelujah. Maybe a few women or a few ladies can volunteer and just come and help our sisters here. The choir or something. You are not singing again. So some of you can volunteer just to come and help them so that they are not scattered or exposed around. You may also help with veils if you have some. Please, so that if you need to cover some of them, you may do that. We are praying now. We have to do that which we do within the confines of modesty and decency. We are praying in the name of Jesus. I'm hearing in my spirit salvation of the male child. There are families where men do not rise. I don't know where you are, but in the name of Jesus, in the name that is above all names, every family where men are tied down, be released now. 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 Be released now in the name of Jesus. Spirits that cause barrenness, leave God's people now. I command fruitfulness in the name of Jesus Christ. The spirits of untimely death, I'm hearing it in my spirit. Families that keep losing loved ones, 
patterns of death that spirit of death oh death where is your sting and oh grave where is your victory here at peniel we come as life-giving spirits death lose your power now death lose your power now death lose your power now lose your power now Parata Faraketos Kalevra de Gebereku Satya Kraparatos Avres and Emelesh. It happens well for others until it gets to your turn. You keep seeing things and yet your hand never holds it. I don't know who that person is, but the Lord is telling me to release you that everything you have seen and your hands has refused to hold it. I stand by prophecy, I push it to your destiny. 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 In the name of Jesus Christ. Now, for all those who are in front, we did not call them out to embarrass them. The manifestations here is just a devil on his way out of their lives. I speak in the name of Jesus to every spirit that has oppressed these people. We come in the name of the Lord God of heaven and we declare pack your load from their lives and go now, now, now out of their destinies. Release their families in the name of Jesus Christ. Every occultic activities we bring to an end now. We bring to an end now. hallelujah if you are trusting god for the fruit of the womb please lay your hands on your stomach i want to pray for you now you don't have to come out for space right where you are lift one hand up and lay one hand on your stomach if you are standing for someone do the same i want to pray for you in the name that is above all names i decree right now as prophet elisha told the woman in Shunem in the name that is above all names according to the time of life I speak to you prophetically return with your miracle children by the word of God we veto every medical report in the name of Jesus we introduce another report and we declare like he did to Sarah may he do to you Lay your hands at any part of your body where you are trusting God for healing. Please go ahead. Let's do that quickly. If it's your head, lay your hands there. Your eyes, lay your hands there. Please. If it's a part of your body you cannot touch, just make contact with your chest as I pray for you. And I want you to shout a believing amen as I pray. In the name of Jesus Christ. There is a man with high blood pressure. I'm seeing your blood pressure go down now. I'm seeing a miracle happen to you now. Now every spirit that is back of any sickness and any infirmity in the name of Jesus Christ, we command that you release God's people now. Release God's people now. And in the name of Jesus, standing in partnership with all the graces here represented we declare be healed now be healed now blind eyes open now deaf ears open now you have any kind of walking condition bone condition be healed now Blood conditions be healed now. Migraines be healed now. Ulcers be healed now. Heart palpitations be healed now. Kidney problems.
problems be healed now genotype problems be changed now there's someone you've had severe pains around your ribs you cannot lie down with that area of your body this has happened for a long time the power of the holy spirit is coming upon you now i bring you life and i bring you healing i bring you life and i bring you healing in the name of jesus now for sake of time whether i mention your case or not in the name of jesus the son of the living god be healed now be healed now hallelujah you can feel free all through the time of this conference or when you return back to your various churches to share your testimonies of the miracles the most important thing is what jesus has done now hallelujah now hear me hallelujah are you ready for the impartation now what is an impartation a transference of grace a transference of grace can i tell you with all humility we are men who have been helped by god those in front you are free in the name of jesus those who are fine and can return to their seat let them go those who are still under the anointing just leave them be patient with them don't force them if they are weak and they cannot stand up the holy ghost is doing a work in them hallelujah just cover them if you need to and then hold them and be patient i want to release graces now i will lift my voice and i will sing i will sing holy I will sing holy to my Lord and Savior, my God and King. I will sing holy. I will sing holy. I will praise the Lamb of God who sits upon the throne. I will worship Him and give the praise to Him alone. He who was and is and is to come, I will sing before His throne forever. number one the grace for speed in the name of Jesus the son of the living God hear me I don't know whose destiny has been there hold them people will start running please hold them so they don't injure themselves right now receive the grace for speed take that grace now speed in ministry speed my god please help them speed in your destiny no more delay no more delay acceleration in your destiny i release that grace upon you man of god receive that grace businessman receive that grace politician receive that grace help this gentleman in the name of jesus please help him so he doesn't enjoy speed in the name of jesus number two the spirit of wisdom there is a grace that can come upon men and grant them access 
to superior levels of wisdom i don't know who has come desiring that grace but in the name of jesus let that grace rest upon you now take that grace in the name of jesus take that grace in the name of jesus wisdom like that of the gods in the name of jesus christ number three there is this grace called favor favor is a real grace believe me on this there is an actual grace called favor that can be tabernacled in a man it is the number one reason why people make destiny progress anything that makes you reject the favor of god has cheated you in the name of jesus i stand as one who has been given the privilege of this grace and in the name of jesus to as many who desire it may that grace rest upon you now strange manifestations of favor men arising to help you men arising to plead your cause kings and nations arising for your sake number four there is the grace for influence and visibility hallelujah to be anointed is not enough there is a grace that elevates you and puts you in a position where you can bless your world there are many gifted people who have been kept down because of the absence of this grace you shall be exalted he says above all the nations of the earth it is important for men to see what God has put in your life and to partake of it. Therefore, right from where you are, let this grace take you to the nations. Right from where you are, let this grace take you to the nations. Hallelujah. Hear me? The grace for signs and for wonders that can rest upon a man especially if you're a minister of the gospel the truth is that we need this results speak it brings acceleration to ministry in the name that is above all names your hands from today will command fearful signs and wonders help that man help that man please fearful signs and wonders Go and heal the sick in the name of Jesus. Go and cast out devils in the name of Jesus. You begin to walk in signs and wonders. Hallelujah. Let me release a grace upon you that very few people know about. Please listen. There is the grace that brings humility. Many people today have been destroyed not because of lust many people have been destroyed not because of laziness the cancer of pride is a destiny destroyer hallelujah humility is not refusing to acknowledge what God has done humility is bringing people to a point where they see that outside of the help and the assistance of God you are not able to rise you can be simple but it does not mean you are humble simplicity is not humility you know you are a humble person when your life always inspires and projects jesus i pray for you every manifestation of pride pride in ministry pride in business pride in destiny pride of life pride based on material acquisitions in the name of Jesus let this grace come upon you and empty you of pride let it come upon you and empty you of pride that indeed you will decrease so that Jesus alone is seen in your life finally 
for this session tonight the Bible says blessed is the man who God causes to approach him there is a grace that makes for encounters God does not just come to men men are helped by God to meet God it is out of the abundance of encounters that men become strong encounters by scripture and supernatural visionary encounters I pray for someone this may not be for everybody but in Jesus name for someone who has been crying for genuine encounters encounters that translate to power encounters that translate to stature and maturity receive that grace now receive that grace now please help that lady receive that grace now hallelujah over the northeast we stand as sons of the soil and we decree and declare oh earth hear ye the word of the lord let the sound of war let the sound of bloodshed come to an end upon our land let's agree together shout a believing amen we stand as watchmen tonight from adamawa state to yola to taraba to gombe the entire northeast the spirits of bloodshed the spirits that stop the advancement of the gospel as the church of the lord jesus christ here at peniel 2023 we command those spirits be banished from our territories for the sake of those who have been martyred for the gospel across all of these lands lord for every one person who died raise mighty apostles raise mighty prophets raise mighty evangelists raise mighty teachers raise mighty pastors until we become an exceeding great army in the name of jesus christ and i pray i'm wrapping up the spirit of poverty and lack that has impoverished our people that has left us beggarly that has taken our women to compromise turn our men into arm robbers in the name of jesus by the ministry of the teaching priest may god bring a restoration of a decent life decent families the sufficiency by the spirit in the name of jesus christ the spirit of lukewarm christianity compromises lost pride prayerlessness wordlessness lack of passion for the things of god we drive it out of this region we drive it out of this region we drive it out of this region in the name of jesus we pray particularly for our children rising the young men and women let me use taraba as a point of contact every apostle who is currently an arm robber on the street what happened to saul may it happen to them every matriarch like rahab who is still at the wall of jericho prostituting we decree and declare may the good hand of god fetch them and bring them to the fold we pray for all our missionaries all the mission agencies scattered across the villages and scattered across several places number one may god keep them number two may god keep their wives and children number three may god raise help and support for them in the name of jesus let me pray for every church here represented and prophetically the church across taraba and the northeast we may have differences in several areas that is not the issue 
the one thing that binds us is that we love Jesus the one thing that binds us is that we are sincere in our heart desiring to serve him and see him revealed to the nations for that sake may every pulpit that is walking in error be corrected now may every head that has been wrongly anointed towards compromise let there be the ministry of mercy upon such a one we pray especially for young ministers who may have been wrongly mentored and are now practicing lifestyles and ministerial practices that are antichrist and leading to perdition we pray sincerely may mercy find them and for those who are standing strong the grace to remain strong the grace to remain strong without compromise the grace to remain strong till the end let every altar in taraba be a place of salvation be a place of transformation be a place of love be a place of healing in the name of jesus finally we pray for the anglican communion here in taraba and we pray for peniel it has become a prophetic platform may the god of heaven preserve it may the god of heaven anoint it the more let it be a prophetic platform where generals are raised from this region in the name of jesus christ for in jesus much less name we have prayed hallelujah thank you jesus let me make one altar call in this one final night of my session there's no need cajoling you i made an altar call yesterday and there were massive people please no moving around let's just spare one or two minutes and we're done you are in this place and you're saying apostle please do not close this program Give me an opportunity to know this Jesus whose life has been the theme of this conference. You are here and you are saying, Apostle, I may have given my life to Jesus, but I was not here yesterday. Or I was here yesterday, but I was not convicted. Now I am ready to make it right with Jesus. I want to count one to five. I am looking for only one sincere person who is not ashamed of coming to Jesus. Wherever you are, those outside, if they are coming for Jesus, please clear the way for them let's allow them to come and make it right with Jesus I'm going to count one to five begin to clap for them as they come wherever you are come to Jesus I have decided to follow Jesus no turning back keep clapping no turning back I have decided to follow Jesus no turning back no turning back celebrate them as they come I have decided to follow Jesus no turning back no turning back I have decided to follow Jesus no turning back no turning back the cross before me the world behind me no turning back no turning back come keep coming the cross before me the world behind me no turning back no turning back thank you ladies and gentlemen on behalf of his lordship and all the graces here represented we salute you for making this noble decision you have come to jesus this is the greatest miracle indeed translation from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of his dear son no matter what you have done and no matter how your life has been before now jesus comes gracious and compassionate slow to anger and rich in love if you're joining them please join them quickly i want to lead them to make the prayer now lift your right hand if you will all of you in front 
and for all those who are following by way of the television or the internet or watching a rebroadcast I want you to say this loud and clear Lord Jesus tonight I have heard your word I believe in you that you are the son of God right now I confess my sin and I receive your life into my spirit I declare that the power of sin Satan hell and the grave is broken over my life I receive eternal life into my spirit and I declare that Jesus is my Savior my Lord and my King I go for whatever and backward never amen let me pray for you father thank you for these ones I stretch my hands towards them and I decree and declare by the authority of your word I declare their sins forgiven and I declare that this is a new beginning for them the grace to walk in righteousness the grace to live the victorious Christian life I release that grace upon you in the name of Jesus that from these people tonight will rise mighty men and women who will serve the purposes of the kingdom with their lives the Lord bless you in the name of Jesus like we did yesterday let me beckon on you all of you please look at me may I request that you move to my right which will be your left just help those under the anointing and all of you this way in concert let's celebrate them as they go counselors will have a word with you and then you will be back to your seat is this the best you can do Taraba give them a big big God bless you hallelujah now just one last charge the conference does not end tonight the conference is a stretch let me encourage every one of you invite as many people there are many other speakers who are coming line upon line God is helping so make sure you are actively a part of the remaining sessions for your blessing for your edification and as you wrap up finally I'm praying that at the end of this conference it will be that indeed you have encountered God in very supernatural ways your Lordship sir thank you so much on behalf of yourself your wife the Anglican communion and the entire body of Christ in Taraba thank you for your love thank you for receiving us may the Lord bless you in Jesus hello beloved in Christ we hope this message was a blessing to you I would want you to do something for us if you are new here kindly hit on that subscribe button for us and then like this video as well share to your family and friends to bless them because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body to their soul and to their spirit we would need you to do one thing for us to tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from and then if you've got any testimony for us kindly share with us thank you for watching in the name of jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise i decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain